Welcome back to New Rockstars, I'm Eric Voss, and this is a breakdown to the trailer for season four of The Boys, where we are seeing Homelander truly at the height of his power and too many people in the broader public okay with his father-son execution tradition and what looks like an election season season playing into how much men love the Roman Empire. So I'm gonna break down some details that you might've missed in this trailer and point out what we have most to look forward to and what most to dread about The Boys season four. And by the way, this video will contain spoilers for The Boys seasons one through three, as well as the spinoff of Gen V. Hey, you have all been paying for that Amazon Prime free two-day delivery. You've had access to boys content for all these months. So if you skip the show and he gets spoiled by something in this video, that's on you, my friend. Okay, this trailer opens on Homelander alone in his patriotic apartment in Bot Tower. We don't see his face here, but this trailer ends with his face where it's completely covered in blood because you know what? This is a voice. Someone has to be completely head to toe covered in blood. Throughout this opening section, we hear this voiceover narration. Rome, Greece, all democracies fail because people are stupid. These words are actually coming from Sister Sage, a new member of the Seven played by Susan Hayward. More about her in a bit. But again, Roman Empire, my friends. I am always amazed at how the producers of The Boys can just like jump on social trends this fast. Historically speaking, this is a bit of an overstatement. It's not just that people were dumb. There's a lot of like societal and military factors to consider for why Roman democracy failed and why Greek democracy failed. But she does have a point that with Rome, they did like willingly surrender power over to Julius Caesar. And anytime characters talk about whether democracy is like a temporary experiment that is doomed to fail, you know that there's like a fascist undercurrent to that conversation. We do see Vought Tower here that's still under reconstruction after the events of the season three finale of The Boys, where one of Soldier Boy's power wiping out blasts go off as Maeve pushed him out of the building. We see Billy Butcher walking around an old dilapidated Vought video store, this universe's blockbuster video, RIP, and that's partially thanks to big streamers like Netflix and Amazon Prime. I like to think that Blockbuster was like a historical experiment that failed just because people had no future foresight for the way society was changing. There's a display for a movie featuring polarity which is a direct nod to Gen V. Polarity was the soup that we were introduced to in that show, the father to Andre Anderson, both of them having magnetic powers that we learned later on in that season does irreparable damage to their nervous system. Gen V takes place between seasons three and four of The Boys, ties directly into that universe. And Gen V ended with Homelander arriving on the Goldolkin University campus and quelling that riot, but siding against Marie and kind of chastising her for turning against her own kind. It's setting up for what we're gonna see in this season of The Boys, which is soups and people who support soups kind of elevating them to like a higher status within society. A lot of fantasy universes are grim and dark, but lately I just want to spend some time somewhere bright and pleasant, which is why I was so excited to discover Top Troops. Top Troops is a brand new mobile RPG with a really fun mix of strategy, merge mechanics, and massive battles. Top Troops is also really good at scratching that progression itch, letting you build up your city and collect troops. I'm really enjoying Top Troops and I think you will too. You can download Top Troops now by using the link in the description or by scanning the QR code and you'll get 100 gems to spend in the game and a size L king chest. On this standee though, the tagline under polarity appears to say something like from attraction to action. And I think it's called Static Heat 3. There are also posters for The Seven and Big Crazy Love 2. That one featuring Termite, that's a soup that can get really, really small. And if he sneezes in the wrong time, he can really mess up your day. Victoria Newman appears at a campaign rally where she's running for vice president on the Dakota Bob Singer presidential ticket. He is the US Secretary of Defense and he considered putting soups in the military. But Victoria Newman, of course, is secretly a soup with the ability to control blood, much like Marie on Gen V, but she is an expert at weaponizing it to the point of popping people's heads. And there's just something about seeing all these balloons fall that makes me think, are they gonna do a bit here where like a balloon pops and then we don't really know for a second if it's a head popping or a balloon popping. I just don't like popping orbs in the room with Victoria Newman. Homelander knows this about Victoria Newman and he's using this knowledge to keep Newman under his control. She also has a daughter of her own that she gave Compound V to and with Homelander as a threat to both her and her child, she's gonna have to play her cards pretty carefully. She has managed to do this in the past, getting her own adopted the father Stan Edgar pushed out from being Vought CEO. Next, we see Starlight and Huey walking out of New York City's 21st Precinct Police Station. Starlight officially torched her uniform and left the seven in season three of The Boys. Maybe they think the police could do something about soups. Well, they probably know better than that. But Starlight raises her hand, lighting up the area. Looks like reporters are gathered outside. So it kind of seems like this was like a performative press conference. We know this season that Starlight is going to be elevated to a rival political figure to Homelander. We see this shortly after at a Vought branded rally where there are two 
sides. A group of yellow dressed Starlight supporters to the left and Homelander stands to the right. Now, what's crazy about this though, is if you look at the wide shot, there are way more media and onlookers who are aligned with neither side, which I just think is such an interesting political statement from the show. That the people at the fringes, the people who you see screaming at rallies are not representative of the vast majority of Americans. They are just who make the news. And because we point the cameras at them, that's what encourages their bad behavior. I'm not saying that type of crazy doesn't exist. It's just the media plays a huge role in dividing us by focusing on it so much. Now we got to talk about the deep eyeballing this octopus who is a little deep figurine at the helm of a ship steering wheel in this aquarium. Remember Homelander forced the deep to eat his friend slash buddy Timothy the octopus in season three. He longingly touches his finger at the glass as the octopus reaches out to meet it. The quick shot of mother's milk and butcher at TruthCon 2024. The tagline on a banner behind them says there are no conspiracies or coincidences. They walk past the soldier boy booth that has a small poster that reads secrets revealed soldier boy was held captive by the CIA. Frenchie walks in an empty factory with boxes of jitter bean coffee company around him. The next shot shows Kimiko seemingly in the same factory creeping around. There is a real life jitter bean coffee company. The logos are slightly different though. Down from the ground level now we see the two groups of protesters from opposite sides of barricades but now they're in front of the new york county courthouse the side on the right keep america safe signs with homelander's face the other side fight like a girl follow the light i won't be silent any longer resist with starlight's face i assume this is homelander's murder or manslaughter trial that was teased in gen v and it's probably not gonna be that big a deal to homelander but just to be a good citizen he's gonna go through the motions of and again i'm just in awe of the producers of the show for the way they are aiming to satirize real life headlines it's it's scary how well this show is paralleling the real world. But this two-sided protest erupts into violence, and while Starlight looks horrified at it, you can see Homelander tucked away just smiling at the madness. This sequence ends with this whole speech about democracy being confirmed to come from Sister Sage, and Homelander asks, like Caesar, and she responds, like Caesar. I think we have to acknowledge, though, that that didn't end well historically for Caesar either. It's clear that Homelander's determined to fill the ranks of the Seven with some like-minded soups. In the past, fellow Seven members like Maeve and Starlight have stood in his way and even tried to eliminate Homelander entirely, but now that he is without leash, Homelander wants to get everything he wants and be fully in command. Homelander holds Ryan's hand and lifts it up triumphantly as they're both on stage with the other members of the Seven and what looks like a boys choir behind them. We see the new members being added to the Seven, Firecracker and Sister Sage. These are both original characters of the show. Firecracker is being played by Valerie Curry. She seems to be hosting a show called Truth Bomb that I assume is on the VOD network. She has a belt buckle with a gun and a bullet clip and has a bandolier of bullets across her chest. She comes out blaring an air horn and yeah, I'm kind of getting some Lauren Boebert vibes from her. I don't know, we'll see what Firecracker can do. I wonder if she has like some ability to like bend bullets or stop bullets or some kind of control over metal or black powder or something like that. Or maybe just a figure like Jubilee who can create like fireworks and sparks out of her hands. Sister Sage, if we're drawing more political parallels that'll piss off some of you, I feel like there's some Candace Owens vibes there. Quick shot of Jeffrey Dean Morgan greeting Billy Butcher. There's a quick shot of Firecracker performing at what looks like a nativity concert or pageant. I think those are the three wise men that that's the star, that's the donkey at the nativity manger. And I think it's fun to see Firecracker in this role because Starlight, if you remember, used to perform in concerts like this back at season one. So I think they're bringing Firecracker in as kind of like an annoyance to Starlight. Like Starlight's gonna be like, you're just trying to replace me with someone who does exactly what I do. But her name is Firecracker. She's just like the alt-right conservative Starlight. The Deep, Black Noir, and A-Train pose for pictures in Bot Tower. Looks like A-Train and the Deep might just be back in Homelander's good graces. Now, yes, Black Noir is supposed to be dead, but it looks like they just put someone else in the suit and they're not saying anything. The boys' official social accounts have acknowledged there is no f***ing context here yet, and Jessica Clements had a fun theory that they cloned Homelander and used some of Storefront's DNA. Let us know who or what you think the new Black Moor is. There's a quick shot of a male suit kind of splitting into two. He's wearing a shirt that says Starlight is something. Could be good, could be bad, but assuming this guy can kind of like split into clones of himself, I like how gross and graphic they make it look and I like how one of them is smiling and one of them is like just really in pain with it as Butcher drinks some booze on his temple you can see something squirming under his skin that kind of looks like it could be the side effect of compound V that he took before or it kind of seems like we're seeing some other kind of like fungal toxin in this season reminding me a lot of HBO's The Last of Us like that could be the result of some of the more graphic gross soup powers that we see in this trailer with the little girl attacking Kimiko quick shot of bot CEO Ashley Barrett asking some men who wants their balls crushed and the man on the ground goes, mm -hmm. 
The evolution of Ashley Barrett on all these shows has just been a fascinating watch. Kind of like the way in season one, the CEO had to do these little power moves to keep Homelander in check, but also a way to kind of like psychologically maintain her power. This is something that Ashley Barrett now has to do. Now there's a really cool moment where Homelander just takes off into flight and he lets out this like deranged scream or snarl. <laughs> I love this sound. Just these little private moments with Anthony Starr. He, that's where he does the best acting on this show. It's the only time you really see his true self. This shot of A-Train with this jar of whatever these roots or tendrils are is what I'm talking about with this possible fungus plot line. Like Vought maybe incubating some way to do like mind control or something like that. This jar that A-Train is looking at could also contain someone's hair. It's kind of hard to tell what it is, but I'm hoping it's not like Homelander's hair that it's going to be used for like uh, DNA cloning purposes. Let's just hope that it's some of uh, alopecia to Ashley's hair. Ryan is following in Papa's footsteps and throwing this man in the side of the building in front of onlookers, completely splattering his body. But if you look closely, there is this girl in pigtails in the foreground. I kind of wonder if Ryan justified it as in he was like protecting this girl. Maybe this girl was like, hey, this is just my dad who was just trying to like take me home early from something. I just have a feeling that Ryan is gonna have a hero complex, but like doesn't fully know the weight of being a hero. Like his dad never really truly did. And we end with this clip with Jeopardy Morgan's character. The boys. Oof. Who came up with that shit? I mean, having The Butcher and Negan in a show together, I mean, this is just like perfect kismet. I, I love that these two are in a show together. I wanna know from you, what kind of character do you think Jeffrey Dean Morgan is playing? He is like a heavyweight. They must have some amazing role for him, but for now, we don't know too much. The trailer ends with Homelander covered in blood as he rides an elevator alone, but he smiles this sinister smile. I'm really, really excited for season four. It's coming at some point in 2024. And don't forget to click the link in the description or scan the QR code to download Top Troops today. Top Troops is a brand new mobile RPG with a really fun mix of strategy, merge mechanics, and massive battles. Top Troops is also really good at scratching that progression itch, letting you build up your city and collect troops. I'm really enjoying Top Troops and I think you will too. You can download Top Troops now by using the link in the description or by scanning the QR code and you'll get 100 gems to spend in the game and a size L king chest. Let me know in the comments below what you're most looking forward to from this season. Big thanks to everyone on the New Rockstar team for helping jump on this video early on Saturday morning. I'm currently in and out of work right now as I'm headed out on paternity leave. So I'm not gonna be on the channel as much in the month of December, but you'll still see me around in some other videos. Jessica Clements is coming back to help cover for me during this time. Thanks to all of you for watching. Subscribe to all three channels of the New Rockstars Network and I'll see you soon. Bye.